Hi everyone, Kim here from Tiny Creations by Kim. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful Wednesday. I'm coming on today to show you guys how I neutralize my kits. Um, first off, this is the Starling kit by AK Kitagawa. And we'll start off by explaining neutralizing. Um, each kit that you get may or may not have a tint to the vinyl. As you can see, this kit to me has an orangey tint to it. And I do want to mention also that this um, process is just how I do it. It's not the right way, not the wrong way. Other artists may do it differently, but this is um, what I do to achieve what I'm trying to achieve with the doll, and it works for me. So I do want to mention that. Um, so anyway, as you can see, this kit is a little bit orange, and we don't want to start painting with, I guess you could say, a color already on our vinyl. We want our vinyl to be as neutral as possible with as little tint or color or hint of color as possible. And so what we're doing when we're neutralizing is we're getting it to pretty much a skin tone that has no tint to it. No yellow or I've noticed kits that have a yellow tint, I've noticed kits that have a pink or a red tint, an orange tint, and some uh, kits that are actually pretty neutral, which in my opinion, a lot of the Bountiful Baby kits come pretty neutral. Um, so what we're going to do with this kit today, we're going to have to neutralize and we're going to have to lighten before we start painting. Okay, sorry about that. I do also want to mention that usually I get interrupted 50 times while I'm painting. Um, so if my girls come in here or start acting all crazy or you hear some screaming or something in the background from them, I'm going to have to pause the video and handle it. So I may have to pause this video and restart it a couple times, but I think we'll be okay. We'll be able to get through this. <laughs> okay, so first off, when finding out, figuring out how to neutralize, you need to know the color wheel. And you could Google search the color wheel. Um, the reason being is in order to neutralize, you have to apply the color opposite the color wheel. So if you look at the color wheel, you'll see orange, and opposite from orange on the color wheel is blue. So in order for us to neutralize this vinyl, we are going to have to add a blue wash to it. And not only am I going to add um, blue paint to the doll, I'm going to mix the blue paint with white because I'm also going to be lightening. I'm going to lighten the kit also after I do my um, blue wash to neutralize it. But today we're just going to film the neutralizing process. So let's get started. I'll tell you guys what I have here. Let me grab my pouncing brushes. Is this my pouncing or my yellow? Nope. Okay. So what I have is my blue mop. This is the one that I use for all my blue tones. And then I have my pouncing brushes. These ones I use just for pouncing in the creases. Once we apply the, um, the wash over it, the deep creases tend to collect paint and it will look powdery or speckly. So we're going to pounce out that extra paint in those creases. So let's get mixing. First we need, oh, also my sponge to save a little time. I already, um, modified my sponge. All I did is take, I get these cosmetic wedges. These are my favorite ones. I get them from Dollar Tree. I've tried different ones and I like these ones the best. All I do is peel off the top layer, which gives you this bumpy texture. And then I just cut around it to make it round. Because if it's square like this, as you pounce, you'll see these sharp lines and you don't want that. You want it to blend nice the one thing about reborning is blending, 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 blending. Everything needs to blend very nicely. So here I got my paint thinner. Make sure you guys can see. I don't have a camera that I can um, flip to actually see what you guys can see. So this will be a little bit of a challenge. But I'm not quite ready to buy a new camera yet. Alright, so we're going to fill up the middle of the well about... Not quite halfway yet. I like to leave room for me to add more if I need to. But you know what? This is a big doll, and this probably won't be enough. Sometimes I. Why did you take in my goldfish? 
and our first interruption. Just a second. <laughs> okay, back to mixing up our paint. Move this over. This right here, that's my light. I can't move it, but I don't want it in your guys' way. So let's just move this. Zoom in a little. Okay, so let's get our paint mixed up. I am using, and I just go by um, like my eye, like what I like. There's no specific measurements, but I have this Bountiful Baby Thalo Blue number two. Let's see, can you? Nope, it's completely black, so we'll have to keep it back here. Okay, and then I use Titanium White. you Mackenzie thank you okay go play though okay I, I let her have that so she wouldn't take my okay thank you now go play for mama be good okay so we're gonna start with the white first I always like to add in my light color first if I start with blue mixing that in and then go to add white it's gonna leave blue in my white as you can see you might be able to see there's some color in there from me mixing, but that's not really a big deal. But in general, I like to start with my light color first. So I'm gonna take some white paint and we're gonna mix that in our little well here. Oh, also, I spoke with my Levi that I'm expecting. So you can see the color was this is not white looking because there's color left behind on this brush but I didn't wash it so that's why you see so much color but I didn't need to wash it because I only use this for blue anyway um, but the artist of my Levi that I'm expecting has shipped my baby out today so I'm so excited I hope we will be getting him very soon blue if you see I only added a little bit to the tip I added a lot of white, it almost filled the whole outside of the brush, but blue is very potent, so you only want a little bit at a time. A, a little goes a long way when it comes to blue. Alright, I'm going to add a little bit more white and a little bit more blue. And I usually have paper towel, but we ran out, so I've got napkins here. Get that mixed in and we're covering the entire kit and a little more blue let's see what we got all right I'm liking this and we're most likely gonna have to add two coats of this so I like how this color looks so far, so we're going to go with it. And this color separates very quickly, so it needs to be stirred constantly. Every time I go to add some more paint to the doll, I'm going to be mixing. And I'm going to be fast forwarding too. Once I show you guys how I do this first leg, I'll kind of fast forward probably until I do the head because I'm going to be doing the same thing to all the limbs and even the head. But the head's my favorite part. I love I always do the head last because it's my favorite part. The limbs are kind of a pain. All right. So, let's see. You guys can see good here. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to do here got my sponge. I'm going to stir up my paint, give it a good mix. I'm going to wipe off the excess paint on the side and then I am just going to brush it right over the limb here. It looks very blue but once I pounce it off it's not going to look this blue. I'll do the top of the thigh and then I'll stop there 
And now I'm gonna pound. I am pouncing this excess paint off, and this is also going to blend the paint. And I'm going to do this over the entire kit. And I'm making sure not to touch the kit. And also, I forgot to mention, make sure you wash your hands before you start. If you have any oils or anything left on your hand, you don't want to get it on the vinyl. All right, now once I'm done here, I'm going to press my sponge on my napkin to get rid of any excess paint. All right, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to the back of the leg. Mixing up my paint again. Brush the paint on, make sure you're getting in the crease. Even though we're gonna be pouncing, you still wanna get it in there. All right, and then we're gonna pounce away. And blue, you have to be really careful with blue because blue is hard to get off the vinyl. Mama. What, baby? Oh, that's so pretty. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Mama. Thank you. So once you get it on there, you got to kind of work quick with it. I hope you guys can see this good enough. The lighting's not the best. For me, it's the best. I like it, but to record, it isn't the best. It's not the brightest. I don't have the best equipment for recording videos yet. I haven't really got that far. Eventually, hopefully, I can get some more things so you, you guys can see my videos better. And You should see how I have my tripod right now. I have it stacked on some storage bins just to get it high enough so you guys can see. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. You guys probably can't see this. If I bring the limb too close, let me see if I can zoom in, if you can see. Sometimes it gets blurry when you zoom in. Mm, I don't think you guys will be able to see, but there is some paint buildup in the creases. So what I'm going to do now is go through all these little creases here. Just pounce. I'm not going to rub. If you rub, you're going to rub all of the paint out. And you don't want to rub all the paint out. You just want the excess gone. And then as I go through, I'm going to wipe my brush off on my little napkin I have here. And I use this thinner one for these thinner creases. And for the thicker creases, like the back of the leg, I'm going to use this thicker brush. Gets in there a little better. Alright, that's good to me. Okay, so now we're going to work on the back of the leg. This is a very big kit, so it's a little hard for me to hold. Okay. Or the, did I say back of the leg? The bottom of the leg. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to mix my paint up again. And I'm going to just brush it right on the knee. Now when it comes to the bottom part of the leg, I usually just do the whole thing at once instead of in two parts like we did the top. Okay, so let's pounce this off. And this process does take a, a little bit of time because you are applying it to the entire kit.
And we should already be able to see a little bit of a difference from the way the vinyl will look once I get this first coat on and from where it did look. So I'll compare with the other leg that we didn't do yet. What are you doing, baby? part's kind of boring. Sometimes actually I feel like I'm going to fall asleep. I don't know if it's just because it's boring or if I feel so relaxed or maybe a mixture of both but I've been doing this before not even realizing I'm like nodding in and out. <laughs> All right so let's see here. That's nice and pounced. Now we're going to do the foot. And the hole in here, I should probably cut it. It's quite small. Usually I like to stick two fingers in the, um, the limb. It gives me more control. Alright, so for the foot, we're going to do the same thing. The hands and feet take a little longer because you got there's so many creases that you have to pounce the paint out of. Alright. Pounce, 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 pounce. I hope to be doing more of these tutorials for you guys. I'm probably not going to do, um, show, oop, show you every step with this kit. I'll just show you probably a few here and there. It's quite time consuming. It's kind of difficult for me to get these videos made just with the kids and I have to kind of plan it out. So once I get a little quicker at these videos or get a little more comfortable, then I'll be making more. But I'm hoping to show you guys how to neutralize this kit. And then I'm also hoping to film me painting the hair on it. I've got a lot of people asking about hair painting tutorials. so. I will probably record how to paint the hair as well. But, um, yeah, but neutralizing the kit is one of the most important parts, in my opinion. So I wanted to make sure I showed you guys how to do that. Make sure you're getting those piggies. This is a huge jaw. She's supposed to be 23 inches when she's done, or when she's uh, assembled. And she will be for sale too, so if you guys are interested. All right, really make sure you get into these little creases. I want you guys to be able to see, but I'm also having trouble seeing. Alright, get all of those creases. You can see the build up probably from there in the side of the foot here. Let's move this up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a lot of blue build up in the crack here. Also over here, and after um, we go through these creases, like most of these deep creases, we're going to pounce over it, these really deep ones. Because it leaves kind of smear marks. When the paint's thick like this and you pounce over it, it just kind of smears the paint out. So we need to make sure we're blending it after. All 
right, that's looking good. And also check the toenails, because sometimes in those creases there, the paint will build up also. My ankle creases look good. It doesn't look like I need a pounce in there. Let's look at the bottom of the foot. Yep, there's a little paint build up in the bottom, creased. And more paint build up in the toes here. All right, I'm gonna pounce over that. A little bit in this pinky toe here, the baby toe. These are really deep creases on the style, which is, it's a good thing for realism, but sometimes it's hard to get the paint in there or get the paint out of there, I guess I should say. Eat both ways. All right, let me see here. Bring you guys a little closer, maybe. All righty, I'm gonna go look over this doll real quick. And the blue is a little heavy on some of these areas on the foot, so I'm taking a, a plain sponge and just pouncing over the areas where I can see the blue a little bit too heavy. I'm just noticing some white spots. I don't know if those are on the vinyl beforehand. I don't know if you guys can see it on the heel. There's like a little white Okay, now it's smearing. It must just be from the paint. There must have been some white paint left on the brush that didn't uh, mix all together. So there's a little bit of white streak. So I'm just going to pounce over that. Okay. So, top of the toe here looks a little bit blue. And it's okay. You'll, you'll see, you'll notice like it's not perfectly 100% even. You'll notice it's a little more blue in some areas. But that's okay because we're also going to lighten the doll. So let's see um, what we're looking like right now. Let's grab the other limb. We should be able to, sorry, <laughs> awkward position. I can't get this leg off here. My brother-in-law made me a, there we go, a drying rack. Because the one that I had was a little bit... Uh, too small and the, I couldn't, couldn't really fit the larger limbs on it. All right, can you guys see this difference? Let me get you over here. Can you see that difference so far? This one's super orange and this one's more of like a pale color. So after one layer, that's what the neutralizing has done so far. So we're definitely going to need to put two neutralizing layers on this doll. So I'm going to get started on this one here. And I'm just going to continue on exactly what I did. I'm going to pounce in the creases. I'm going to pounce over the whole kit. So let's go. I'm going to put my music on too. It takes such a long time for me to do this. I have to have my music on. Alrighty, let's do this.
right, sorry about that. My camera died. So I did complete the arms and legs. I did the same thing. I applied the color all over the vinyl and then pounced and pounced in the creases. And make sure you're double checking over, especially around the fingers and toes, that there's no extra blue that had been left over or uh, smudged. Make sure you get that because I've had numerous times to where I missed something and I ended up baking it on on accident. Usually you can um, fix it up to where you can barely see it anyway, but still. Also, I wanted to mention that when you are painting with using the paint thinner, it does tend to evaporate kind of quickly as well. So usually when I get to the head, I have to add a little bit more paint thinner because not only does it evaporate, well, I guess when it evaporates, it also makes the paint thicker. It makes the color um, more vibrant, I guess you could say. And we don't want that. We want this to be a very light wash. So I added a little paint thinner and we're just mixing it here and then I'm going to go over the head. Now that we're getting around the face, we need to make sure we are pouncing very well. This is the money maker right here of the doll. I feel like uh, limbs are important, definitely, but the face is the most important. So this is what needs to be 100% as perfect as you can get it. So we're going to go ahead and really make sure we're pouncing and making sure we're getting in all those creases. Lots of creases in the face with the eyes and the nose and the mouth and, and the chin. And this little cutie has a little butt chin. I think it's adorable. My husband has a butt chin and so do my girls. My son had one when he was born up until like recently it's like starting to go away and this blue color that I'm using I'm also using something very very similar for the blue tones and the veins also the veins I just add a little bit of a greener tint so it's pretty much this paint with a little bit of a uh, it's actually the vein blue that comes with the Bountiful Baby um, kit that you can buy. If you buy the Bountiful Baby paint kit, you um, will receive some already pre-mixed colors. One of them is vein blue, and to me it's too green. So what I do, I do still like the color, just if it wasn't so green. So I use this mixture here, or something very similar to it and I mix in that vein blue color. That's how I get my veins. And I'm noticing, I'm looking at the limbs from here that are on my drying rack. I'm actually liking the color that this doll is turning out to be with just this first blue wash. I'm not even quite sure on what kind of flesh tone I want to go for her yet. It will, it'll be Caucasian, but um, it, Still, uh, ca every Caucasian flesh tone is different. So I'm going to be uh, probably deciding as I paint on which way I want to go with her painting. But for now, I think I'm liking how the tone is looking. Definitely needs to be lightened. So I will definitely be adding probably two to four layers to lighten the doll. I usually do about two to five. And that will be after we bake. So once we're done, if I wanted to add another blue layer, if it was still too orange looking for me, then I would add another blue wash to the doll and then bake. You don't have to bake in between washes. My 
tip would be to bake between every two to three layers that you're doing. I generally like to do two and then bake. So uh, if I were to have added, add another one, I would bake it right after. And then what, before I start my light lightning layer, sounds like I'm saying lightning, lightening layer, um, I'm going to bake since it's a separate layer from this blue wash. So even though I'm only doing one, I'm still going to bake after I do this layer. And when I lighten the doll, all I'm going to use is, if also if you have that kit, you'll receive a nail tip color. I really like using the nail tip color to lighten the doll. I don't just use straight white. I still want the doll to... What is flying around outside? I'm sorry. Something just caught my eye like a bright orange leaf I just seen floating around outside. And it's all snowy, so it's kind of weird to see that. Um, what was I saying? I'm losing my train of thought so bad, you guys, lately. I don't know what's going on with me. I was talking to my sister-in-law, and she said she was going through the same thing probably this time when her youngest, her third child, was a little younger than my daughter is now. I'm just losing my train of thought so bad. I don't know what's going on with me. She recommended I use essential oils, and she recommended I try the rosemary oil. And I did the other day, and it did seem to help. But I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me lately. Maybe I'm just tired. <laughs> um, oh, I was talking about the light color that I use. So I use the nail tip. And if you don't have nail tip, I also like to use sometimes a lot of white with a touch of brown. I just don't like using straight white when I'm trying to achieve a flesh tone. I don't want this doll to be white. I want it to look like a nice flesh color. So if I'm adding white, I just feel like it's too white. So I need to add a little bit of um, realism to the color, like uh, like a little bit touch of brown, or maybe a touch of yellow and touch of red, or just so the color's not that bright white. So that's why I like using that nail tip. That one works nice for me. So I will be applying that color to the doll after I bake this. And I won't be recording that. I won't be doing that today. I have a few other things going on. My uh, sister-in-law, my other sister-in-law is coming to stay with us for a couple days. So I'm going to get the house ready and look forward to visiting with her. And soon I'm going to be retouching up um, Mackenzie's baby, Annabelle, my old, one of the dolls in my old collection that I gave to her. I'm going to touch her up. So I'm going to be adding some pink hair. If you didn't see my last video, I'm going to touch up her painting and then her flash painting. And then I'm going to add some pink hair to her. I'm kind of excited because I've never done something on ordinary like that. So I'm going to be doing that too. And like I said, I plan on also recording the hair painting process with this baby. And I will be doing plenty more in the future of me doing different things like blushing and mottling and creasing and all that good stuff. But for now I figured I would show you step one. Well I guess step one would be washing the doll. I don't think I mentioned that. It's very important to wash your kit before you start painting. Most of these kits, if not all of them, have factory oils left behind. They have to put oils I don't know if it's in the vinyl or on the in the mold or whatever they do in, or, to, in order to get the doll out of the mold. So they use these oils and you really need to wash that stuff off. I learned with my first doll, Gemma, I didn't wash it before I painted it and I could not get the paint to cure until I realized that I should have washed it. So what I did is I ended up washing it and what happened is the paint cured perfectly. I was messing with my oven for hours trying to figure out what was going on and it's because I didn't wash the kit. And all I use to wash it is any type of dish soap and a soft bristle toothbrush or one of those baby brushes, the baby hair brushes that are soft. That's all I use there. Okay, so I'm just making sure I get in the ear good, which I do actually add a little bit of blue tone into the ear too. So. So that looks good for me. 
I'm liking the way her coloring is looking. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bake her in my New Wave oven for 9 minutes at 265. So I'm going to do 265 for 9 minutes. That's what I have found out cures the baby properly and it doesn't overcook the baby where they're shiny or any yellow spots or anything like that. Everyone's oven's different. Uh, you'll have to test out your oven and figure out what works best. That's why having spare reborn limbs is really great. So you can do tests like that because every oven's different, I have noticed. So I have my, my girl here. She's still got some wet spots on her. I'm going to wait till she is completely dry. And then I will go ahead and give her a bake in the oven. And we will put her away until I paint next time. So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys were able to see everything real nicely. And I plan on doing many more of these in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching and God bless.